Are you planning to request a family-based green card? Then this is for you. In today's tip of the week, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know for getting your family-based green card. Join me. Hi, my name is Andre Major. I'm an immigration attorney and an immigrant. My family and I came to this country a long way back and lived here without legal status. We dealt with the problems this carries, the stress and preoccupation of getting into legal trouble or the risk of being deported. We had very bad experiences dealing with the immigration system, and we partnered with the wrong people that only made things worse. So you can trust me when I say, I know what your experience and that I want to help you. That's why I became a lawyer to help people like you have an easier path to legal status in this country than I did. Today, we're going to talk about the family-based green card and what you need to obtain it. So let's go right ahead and start with this video. There are a variety of ways you can apply for a green card in the U.S. immigration system. There's employment, there's refugee asylum, there's diversity lottery, and of course, family-based immigration, which is the most common. In 2019, almost 69% of people that got a green card did it through a family-based application. The first thing needed to apply for this type of green card, as its name implies, is for you to be related to a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident. To apply for this green card, there is a handful of eligible relationship with a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident that you need to fall into. And these options are divided into two categories, immediate relatives and family preference. What's the difference? Immediate relative, there's a visa available immediately once your petition is approved. Family preference, once your petition is approved, you're going to have to wait for a visa. How long? Depends on the preference category. For the immediate relative category, there are only three options, and that's a spouse of a U.S. citizen, an unmarried child under age 21 of a U.S. citizen. So what I mean by that is if I'm a U.S. citizen, which I am, and my child is not married and under 21, he's my immediate relative. Now, my child can be by adoption, it can be biological, or it can be step relationship, meaning it's my wife's son and I married my wife before my son turned 18. So he's my child for immigration purposes, even though biologically he might not be. So spouse of U.S. citizen, unmarried child under 21 of a U.S. citizen, and parents of a U.S. citizen who are at least 21. So if I'm applying for my son who's not a U.S. citizen, but I am, that's one category. If I'm not, I don't have legal status, but my child is, and he's over 21 and a U.S. citizen, then I'm his immediate relative. I know that's confusing. I apologize. I wish I could simplify it any more than that. You just need to memorize it. There's no two ways about it. This is their very specific categories that are in part because an immigrant visa is always available for those three. Besides the time it could take to submit your paperwork, the immediate relatives aren't subject to the long waits that other types of visas have. So there is practically no wait for that visa. The rest of the eligible family members fall into the family preference categories. For this grouping, there is usually a longer wait period, and that's because there's a limit of these visas available each year. The members that fall into this category are unmarried adult sons and daughters, where that's 21 or over, of U.S. citizens, spouses and unmarried children, that's under 21, of permanent residents, meaning green card holders, unmarried adult sons and daughters of green card holders, married sons and daughters of any age of U.S. citizens, brothers and sisters of adult U.S. citizens. So what does this mean? Grandparents, grandchildren, nephews, nieces, uncles, aunts, cousins, and in-laws cannot be directly petitioned. Now, if you have a relative that falls into one of those categories, you can start the process. And the first part of this video is that your qualifying family member must request an immigrant visa to be available to you. So this is the person who's a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident is applying for you, but obviously they have to fit into one of the categories I explained. They are, I, I wish I could tell you they're logical, they're not, it just is what it is. Regardless of your family-based category, an immigrant petition must be filed. This is made by submitting Form I-130, Petition for Alien Relative with the U.S. government. This form will establish the existence of a qualifying relationship and will make the request for the visa to be set aside. Like I mentioned before, an immediate relative will always have a visa available. Meanwhile, a family preference relative 
could wait from a few months to several years or decades to get their visa. This can depend on how many people are waiting the same category, what country they're, they're coming from, and when they file. The next step for requesting the green card comes after the visa petition under the form I-130 has been approved and an immigrant visa is available. It is now that the family member can request the green card and you can request it either inside the United States or outside the United States, depending on circumstances. To request your green card outside the US, the most common thing is to go to an embassy or consulate. This is known as consular processing. You will need to submit your application and all the required documentation to the National Visa Center or Embassy, and then a consular interview will take place by an embassy officer before granting you the visa. On the other hand, to apply for a visa inside the United States, the main requirement is that you have entered the country lawfully. This way you could use the adjustment of status process to apply for your green card. So you need to have lawful entry and you need to have an immediate relative applying for you generally. This type of adjustment is usually more common to immediate relatives since a visa is always available. But then again, since every case is different, there can be an option for family preference immigrants to get their green card inside the US too, although this is less common. So family-based application generally has two components. One, you gotta document the relationship, file the I-130, show that you have a qualifying relationship to someone who's a US citizen or lawful permanent resident. And the second is the change of status. Change of status happens either inside the United States or outside the United States. Generally, for you to adjust your status inside the United States, you need lawful entry and immediate relative. So if your relative is a green card holder, generally, it doesn't matter whether you entered legally or not, you're not going to be able to adjust your status inside the United States. Every case is different. If you want to talk about your specific case, give us a call. If we can't help you, we won't take your money. All of this may sound simple enough, but it's always good to have someone with the knowledge and expertise on your side to help you check all the needed forms, make sure all the qualifications are in order and can help you create the package you will need to submit your request. Because even though this is one of the most common ways to get a green card, USCIS rejects almost 10% of all applications right away because something is missing or is done incorrectly, i.e. not signing the forms, or incorrect filing fee or sent to the wrong place. USCIS denies many more applications and sometimes puts people into removal proceedings when they deny an application. If you want to talk about your case, if you have any doubts about this process or have any other immigration questions, please contact us. We can talk about your specific case. And if we can't help you, we won't take your money. If you like this video, please give us a like and share it with someone who may find this information useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can get all of our weekly immigration tips and updates as soon as they go live. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay healthy and be safe.